Elhamdülillah ve salatu ve selamu ala nebiyillah ve alihi ve sahbihi ve men ve ala. Ve ba'd, from time to time we come together to go over and to discuss matters that concern us. Issues that play a huge factor in our day-to-day life of understanding matters concerning our deen. And we know that this da'wah that we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided us to, da'wah to Salafiyya, it went through a number of phases in this era. It went through times where it was attacked and invaded with ideologies. And alhamdulillah, our prominent scholars, those vanguards, they came forth defending this religion with all what they had, dedicated their lives, authored much publications. And we come to see that learning what they have done in defense of the Salafiyya, of past issues, plays a big role in understanding what lies before us today of the challenges we have to face in the ranks of the Salafiyyun, or those who ascribe to Salafiyya. As they say, إِذَا عُرِفَ sabab بَطَلَ ajab. When the reason is known, the amazement or goes away. So when we understand the root causes of division and what was a factor in separating the people and who were the actual people that strived in dividing and played a role in that, it makes it really easy to understand the issues that we have today before us. And this is very important, that we understand the history of Da'wat al-Salafiyya in this era, and we've seen the timeline and understand it from how it started with certain issues until now, it gives us a bigger picture and puts a light on the problems that we face today and the challenges we have. And when you look back and you judge things based upon its realities, it, it opens one's eye. As well, it makes you judge things as they deserve to be judged. So we're going to, inshallah, look back uh, of a timeline of events that started, that played a role in division in the ranks of the Salafiyun or those who ascribe to Salafiyya and led to certain uh, people following into de- deviation as the aftermath of that. So we're going to start today as a session just to open our eyes. But really, there's a lot of people that come about now. They want to judge matters uh, as they as a single event of today without connecting them to what has occurred and looking at what has occurred of the past and as a timeline it really shows what we how we need to see things as today so we're going to start inshallah with how the first main division the first main fitna that strike da'wah to salafiyya of people that ascribe to Salafiyyah within the ranks and divide it. From the first of those fitna was a fitna called fitna fil iman wal kufr. The fitna in people, a number of individuals authoring books relating to topics of iman and disbelief, where they came with ambiguous wordings. And they spoke about matters of controversy and contentious issues. And they brought terminologies of their own. And it led to differing and division. So, and we know from those people that are around, they can tell you as it is, that before a lot of the, uh, these fitnas, a lot of the people were united. There wasn't really these, these differing that you would find between people that ascribed to Salafiyya. So this was the first of it. So from that time, the first 
that Abdul Fitna was an individual who came with a book in relation to the, ma- the book, the topic of Iman and Kufr. And his name was Murad the Shukri. This man, he authored a book which led to a lot of differing amongst the people. And the book that he authored was Ahkam al-Taqreer fi Ahkam al-Takfir, where he's speaking about rulings, about takfir, removing a person from the fold of Islam. This book was endorsed by who we uh, commonly know as Sheikh Ali bin Hassan ibn Abdul Hamid al-Halabi, a Jordanian uh, known as Jinsia, is residing there, originally from Aleppo, Halab, from, as we know, the students of Albani, rahimullah. At that time, when there was prominent ulama around, yani Albani is still alive, great scholars are still alive, you find someone that is not really known for uh, firmness and knowledge comes and speaks about something so controversial which leads to differing. And it was this book was endorsed by Ali Halabi. He gave a forward to it, he even played a role in publishing the book. And this book was presented due to the differing that it caused to Lejmat al-Da'ima for, uh, to see and to investigate this matter. So Lejmat al-Da'ima it was presented specifically to Sheikh Samahat al-Walid Abdul Aziz bin Baz, rahimahullah. So Sheikh bin Baz, rahimahullah, a question was posed to him concerning this book. So as what's well known, when these books are brought forward to be looked into and examined, Lejmat al-Da'ima, the permanent committee, looks into it. So they responded with an answer in relation to this book, they said, بعد الاطلاع على الكتاب المذكور وجدنا أنه متضمن لما ذكر من تقرير مذهب المرجئة ونشري. He said, after browsing over the book, the aforementioned book, we found that it contains what was mentioned of affirming the ideology of the مرجئة and, and its propagation. And he says, مِنْ أَنَّهُ لَا كُفُرْ إِلَّا كُفُرِ الْجُهُودِ وَالتَّكْذِيبِ That there's no disbelief except disbelief of denial and rejection. And he said, وَإِظْهَارْ هَذَا الْمَذْهَبِ الْمُرْدِي بِإِسْمَ السُنَّةِ وَالدَّلِيلِ وَأَنُّ قَوْلُ الْعُلَمَاءِ السَّلَبِ And that they're presenting, he was presenting that this, يعني, this horrible madhab ideology of the murji'ah, was coming under the name of the Sunnah and also the proof, and this is the statement of the ulama of the Salaf. And here it goes on to say this is ignorance of the truth and talbis, deception, and misguidance. So this was signed by Sheikh Min Baz, as well uh, Sheikh Abdullah al Wadayan, Abu Bakr, Abu Zaid, and Sheikh Salih Fawzan at that time. And then Three months uh, right after this fatwa came about, Ali uh, al-Halabi at that time wrote in the Newsweek newsle- uh, newsletter of Majallat al-Furqan, number 101, in that same year, he wrote a recantation of that book, of endorsing it. He goes, Al-Kitab innama yu'abbar an wijhat ra'i mu'allifihi. He said this book is only expressing the uh, viewpoint of the, the opinion of the author or his, uh, what he holds, Murad Shukri. And then he says after that, وَإِنِّي بِحَمْدِ اللَّهِ وَتَوْفِيقِهِ بَرِيءٍ مِنْ ذَلِكَ كُلِّ He says, I, by a praise due to Allah and the success, I'm innocent from all of that. And after endorsing the book, printing it, uh, this book... Whereas, and he mentions here that he's innocent from it. And then he mentions after that some words that we need to pay attention. He says, وَمَا أَكُونُ قَدْ أَخْطَأْتُ فِيهِ أَوْ إِلْتَبَسَ عَلَيْهِ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ شَيْءٍ فِي هَذَا الْبَابِ وَغَيْرِ فَإِنِّي رَاجِعٌ عَنْهُ He says, whatever that I made an error in, or it wasn't clear to me, 
pertaining to this topic or other than it, and then I recant. So he gives a general retraction. While in the verdict, the v- advice of Sheikh Min Baz and, and so forth, if you read on what they say, and it's as well acknowledged by Sheikh Salih Fawzan, that we advise those who engage into this topic to leave it off and to avoid it and leave it to those who are more firm in it. This is from the advice that was given. And Sheikh Salih Fawzan acknowledged that this was also directed to Ali Halabi. So after this came out, in this year of 1998, we find as well Ali Halabi continues to author concerning this topic. He doesn't stop there and take the advice of Lejmatul Daima of leaving this topic to those who are more firmer and well renowned for their knowledge, especially at that time when there's great scholars still alive. So he wrote two books. Yes, it was before this time, but he continues to reprint it and as well promoted this book. So as this book caused as well differing amongst Ahl Sunnah. So some people they asked Lejma to Daima about these two books. So that was compiled by Ali Hassan Al Halabi. One called Tahdir Min Fitna to Takfir, warning against accusing others of disbelief, and Sayha to Nadir, the cry of a, of a warner, of a warner. So these two books, the, the questioner says, it calls to the Madhab of Irja, which holds that actions are not a fundamental condition upon which the soundness of Iman depends. Another issue is that it mentions that it distorted citations from Sheikh Salam al Taymiyyah, Ibn Kathir. So the Lejmat al-Daima, after studying the two books, they said, we found that the book entitled Tahdir min Fitna to takfir compiled by Ali Hassan al-Halabi, where he added to the sayings of the scholars and the introductions and their commentaries includes the following. They say, number one, the author based the book on the invalid and innovated madhab of the murji'ah, who limit kufr, denial and rejection, of an, or re- limit kufr to denial and rejection and conscious istihlal, believing what is prohibited to be lawful. As seen on page 6, commentary uh, number 2. Also page 22, this opinion opposes that of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah who believe that uh, matters of aqeed, of disbelief, and actions and statements or doubt entail kufr, meaning that kufr is more general. Number 2, the author distorted facts when reporting from Ibn Kathir. So this is from the criticism of Lejmat al-Daim Abu Ali Halabi that they distorted facts of what he reported from Ibn Kathir, from Bidai ibn Nihaya, where he stayed in his commentary, and he cited, and then when you, they went back, they said this was not found. As one number three, they say he fabricated lies. Look at this wording. He fabricated lies against Sheikh Islam of Taymiyyah in pages 17 to 18, where he falsely related to him the claim that the ruling by other than what Allah has revealed was not considered kufr, by Sheikh Islam, unless it is done out of knowledge of belief and stihlal, deeming it to be halal from the heart. So they said this is clear fabrication against Sheikh Islam and Taymiyyah, who promoted, promoted the belief of the Salaf and Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, which is already mentioned. On the other hand, the Madhab falsely attributed to Ibn Taymiyyah is that of the Murji'ah, he says. So this is the, uh, the words of Lejim Sadaima. Number four, he fabricated the meaning intended by the knowledgeable. Sheikh, I mean a great scholar, Muhammad ibn Ibrahim al-Sheikh, in his treatise, Tahkim al qawanin al wadiyya ruling by man-made laws, as he falsely claimed that the Sheikh considers conscious istihlal a condition for kufr. And then they say, although the statements of the Sheikh plainly indicate that he followed the opinion of Ahl-Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So this is another thing. Number five, he commented on the statements of the people of knowledge and imply these statements mean what they do not mean, as in page 108, and as well others that they mentioned, page 110. So he mentioned, he quoted statements and took them out of context. Number six, the book also makes easy the sin of ruling by others than what Allah has revealed, particularly on page 5, 
claiming that paying special attention to enforcing tawheed in this area is considered an invitation of the Rafidah, subhanAllah. This is what is mentioned here against Ali Halibi. On examining the second book, Sayyidat al-Nadir, as well on the, the second book that they examined, they found that it's supporting the tool for the contents of the first book. So they say, accordingly, the permanent committee believes that it's not permissible to print, publish, or distribute the two books because of the falsehood and the fabrications they contain. And they say, we advise the author to fear Allah for himself and for the Muslims, especially the youth, that are zealous to acquire knowledge of the sharia at the hands of the scholars trusted for their knowledge and beliefs. Knowledge is a trust which should not be spread unless it is accordance with the Qur'an and the sunnah. Then they say the author must renounce these opinions and highly shameful approaches or the highly embarrassing uh, things that he has approached in in distorting the statements of the people of knowledge. It is known that returning to the truth is a virtue and a cause of dignity for the Muslims. May Allah grant us success by the permanent committee, Bakr Abu Zaid, Saleh Al-Bawzan, Abdullah ibn Wadayan, and the Mufti uh, currently, Abdul Aziz, Ali Sheikh. So after uh, this, fatu- uh, this fatwa and this advice of Lejmat al Daima, Ali Halabi, one month right after, comes out with a rebuttal and a response to the fatwa of Lejmat al Daima, where he titled it Al Ajwiba Al Mutalaima, Ala Fatwa Al Lejmat al Daima, where he titled it. Uh, suitable answers regarding the fatwa, the verdict of Lejmat al-Da'imah. He, he wrote pages and pages to defend himself. And this affair at that time, some of the scholars was asked because it was causing differing. Who, this is causing more confusion. This, this verdict of the Lejmat al-Da'imah came out and Ali Halabi responded with these words. So, Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi was asked, and we'll play the audio, inshallah. So Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi at that time, because of the differing it caused in Algeria and other number of places, there are people who are asked who is more who's in the right, the Legend of Daima or Ali Halabi. So Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi, after giving advice to the questioner, he says the truth in this matter is with Lejmat al-Da'imah, with no doubt. And he said Ali Halabi has, concerning this topic, takhleet, where he is confused between so many uh, n- number of issues. And we're going to re- listen further. So here, Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi, uh, he clarifies that Ali Halabi was wrong in this, mes- uh, this topic. He said, I can say a thousand times that he was wrong, and he fell into error. And he said, 
after we sh he still from our fellow brothers at that time the sheikh didn't want from him and we just clarified that some of his statements regarding uh, limiting kufr to certain issues he said that he's wrong in that affair as well uh, in response to the the rebuttal that Ali Halabi wrote against Lejmatu Daima, a professor wrote a book in defense of the Fatwa Lejmatu Daima. He called it Raf'u al Laima and Fatwa Lejmatu Daima, removing the blame concerning the Fatwa of Lejmatu Daima. And it was in the year 2002, approximately. So this book was given the preface and the foreword by Sheikh Salih Fawzan, Abdul Aziz Rajihi, and others <coughs> at that time, where Sheikh Salih Fawzan, he wrote as a preface and advice. He says, فَقَدْ طَلَعْتُ عَلَى رَدِّ الْأَخْ Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al-Dawsari عَلَى الْأَخْ Sheikh Ali ibn Hassan al-Halabi فِي اعتراضاته عَلَى فَتْوَى الْأَجْمَةِ الدَّائِمَةِ فِي مَوْضُوعِ الْإِرْجَاءِ وَأَقُولِ He said, I came across the, res the reply, meaning this defense that for the Lajmat al Daima's fatwa against Ali Halabi and his objections against the fatwa of Lajmat al Daima. He says he, he's, he's done well. And then in this book, if you read the author over 150 pages, he brings evidences from Ali Halabi's books where he tampers the words of the scholars and distorts them <laughs> and takes them out of context. So here, Sheikh Salih Bozan acknowledges and said he has done well in his rad against Ali Halabi. And then he said, Ala Sheikh Ali Hassan wa ikhwanihi lima lamma kanu yantasibun ila salaf masalat iman an yaktafu bima katabuhu salaf fi hadhi masala fa fi al-kifaya fa la haja ila kitabat jadida. He gives some beautiful words of advice to Ali Halabi. He said it was upon Ali Halabi, Sheikh Ali Hassan al-Halabi and his fellow brothers being that they're ascribing to the salaf in regards to the topic of Iman, to suffice themselves with what the Salaf wrote regarding Iman. He said, there's no need for these new books that causes confusion to the mind, and it leads to uh, back and forth. He says, this is a great matter. He says, the fitna is na'ima, la yujuzu iqaduha. The fitna is asleep. It's not a permissible to awaken it. So this fitna that Ali Halabi engaged in, he brought out this whole fitna in the topic of Iman by authoring these uh, treaties and came with ambiguous wordings. Then he says, uh, as well, Al al Akh al Sheikh Ali Hassan al Halabi, the Kana, Wala Bud, Min Nakal Kalam Ahl al Ilm, and Yustofi al Nakal, Min Awuli al Akhiri. If he's going to write an author about this topic from the scholars, then he should quote them in their full context from the beginning to the end and bring the scholar's speech from, in totality from his different books so that what is, what's intended by his speech can become clear. And he said he shouldn't suffice himself by just quoting one part of his speech and leaving another, but really this leads to misunderstandings. So this is the advice that Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan gave uh, at that time to Ali Hassan al-Halabi uh, that book that was written. So, with this, Sheikh Abdul Aziz al Rajihi was asked if Ali Hassan al Halabi recanted regarding this topic. We'll play that. So here, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Rajihi mentions some time after if he, Ali Halabi recanted or admitted any error concerning this. He said, for most apparent, he didn't. He said, in fact, he wrote a refutation on those who wrote concerning this topic, advising him. 
And he made dua, may Allah, we ask Allah to guide him. So all this fitna that was caused, yani, we could have been dealt with by Ali Hassan al Halabi, just leaving off these ambiguous wordings and accepting some of the advice of the scholars, where it opened doors of even people attacking Lejmut al-Da'ima, unfortunately, and having bad thoughts. So some of the things that people were doing to defend Ali Halabi afterwards, they came to say that Lejmut al-Da'ima recanted from criticizing Ali Halabi. And we'll play the audio where Sheikh Salih Fawzan attacks this issue, uh, tackles this issue. so here, Sheikh Salih Fawzan was asked if the Lejmus Daim recanted from criticizing Ali Halabi concerning those issues. He says, this is a lie. They have the Lejmus Daim did not recant. And he said, it's upon him to recant concerning these issues. So listen, after all of this, what does Ali Halabi come up with? And we're going to hear when he was asked, you would think that he'll perhaps regret about the differing and the division that he caused with some of these ambiguous wordings and between great scholars, back and forth. Let's hear what he has to say. Mentions that the same the moment the fatwa al-Ajma time came out, he was, was wrote a rebuttal against it, and then he said he wrote a number of pages in defense of himself concerning it. And this, uh, the question I ask him: Were you did you regret in any way regarding it? He says, "Bilax," and the opposite: I didn't regret at all. He says, the days came after to show that I was right and those who criticized me were wrong. SubhanAllah. Okay, so this was led to why some scholars later on, when they are asked about him and some of his works, in particular, Sheikh Abdullah Ghodeyan, before he passed away, he was asked about Ali Halabi, and we're going to see his answer. So Sheikh Abdullah Al Ghodayan was asked about Ali Halabi. So he says to abandon him. Here he warns. He says, For already this person is at the lead of those who have the ideology of the murjia, meaning he opened the door for these people. He opened the door, and even if he, a person says he doesn't have the sexual belief, but he actually, by his, some of these ambiguous wordings, he opened the door for some of these individuals. So that was one fitna that Ali Halabi, up until today, did not recant or clarify any type of regrets regarding this issue of what was criticized. As well, another fitna that took place and divided the people 
which played a big role, was in the year as well, from the beginning of that time, 2001. The fitna of Adnan al-Ar'ur. Adnan al-Ar'ur, uh, Syrian, where at that time criticism was made by a number of scholars concerning this individual and some of the things that he has come with that goes against the Salafi methodology. So Ali Halabi, he was asked in that year, 2001, what do you see regarding this individual? At that moment, he says, لَيْسَ عِنْدَنَا مِنْ جَدِيدٍ بَعْدَمَا ذَكَرَهُ وَتَكَلَّمَ بِهِ كَثِيرًا فَضِيلَةُ أُسْتَادُنَا أُسْتَادِنَا الشَّيْخِ رَبِيعٍ وَالْأَمْرُ كَمَا قِيلِ إِذَا قَالَتْ هَذَامِ فَصَدِّقُوهَا فَإِنَّ الْقَوْلَ مَا قَالَتْ هَذَامِ At that time, he acknowledges what uh, Sheikh Rabi' at that time was wrote regarding Adnan Arur, and he says, this, it is like, as he said, so you would see at that moment that this man, Adnan Arur, Ali Halabi acknowledged his errors. That's how it started. And there was a number of scholars at that time who would warn from him, Sheikh Salih Fawzan, Sheikh Abdul Musin Abad, and many other. But we're going to see Ali Halabi, how he played a role in this fitna with some of the stances that he had. So here there's another audio just to show that he, he he's the one that acknowledged the errors and the mistakes of Adnan Arur, and we're going to mention some of these mistakes so some of the people could know the situation of this individual. But really, was, we'll play here what Sheikh Salih Fawzan said about this individual. And despite him acknowledging these errors and these mistakes, or he even mentioned that Sheikh Albani acknowledged the reputations against him, he continued to go and do muhadharat along with him and support him. Disregarding all those warnings and what he used to acknowledge. So here, Sheikh Saleh Fawzan, when he was asked about this individual, he asked if he could attending his lessons. He says, I advise that the youth cut him off and boycott him and his likes, and not attend his duruses. But this man, Adnan Arur, caused so much of fitna and divided the people. But with all of this, Ali Halabi continues to say that this man, Adnan Arur, is not someone to be warned from. And he, uh, you're going to see that he is, gives talks with this individual where he gave in the year uh, 2012, regarding the Syria revolution, the Thawra, he goes on a broadcasting channel with Adnan Arur, encouraging the Thawra, the revolution. And we're going to s- listen to Adnan Arur at the side of Ali Halabi, they're sitting together. <laughs> وأن تتواصوا بالحق والصبر فيما يزيدكم عند الله تبارك وتعالى رفعة ويزيدكم في دنيا الناس ثباتا بتوفيق الله وإنتي. So here Ali Halabi he addresses calling out the mujahidun in Syria. Yani to be firm and encourages them about what they're upon and also this revolution 
And then Adnan, also Adnan Aror, right beside him, and Ali Halabi is acknowledging all of this on the channel, you can see. So we're going to see it's as if it was a day of Eid, Adnan Ar'ur celebrating so much about the revolution of Syria. La ilaha illallah. Ali Halabi is sitting there and encouraging this. And he's saying, Allahu Akbar, may Allah bless this Torah. How many blood has been shed, bloodshed has occurred. How many people have lost their lives. How many things have been destroyed. And no type of regrets, no clarification. All of this, it was to see that regarding this affair. And I'm going to play here an audio of Adnan Arur, just so people can see some of his stance when this Torah is happening. He, this Adnan Arur is the one that prays Daesh at a time and said about them, ISIS, that they are truthful and they have ikhlas. And then later on, he, when he was asked and confronted about this, he denied it. But alhamdulillah, the person who was asking actually had the audio. So he brought it out, and then right there, Adnan Urur requested that the person be cut off from the broadcast because he exposed the Adnan Urur and his lie. So you can see, he clearly says it's a lie. And he says, may the curse of Allah be upon Daesh and these affairs and whoever supports them. And this is totally denying what the reality of what he did. We'll see. So the person actually who's, who's calling in plays the audio where he says 99 of Daesh and he starts praising them. So then and you can see on the video that Adnan Aror quickly asks the, the host of the broadcast to cut the questioner off. You can see that. It was reality. All you could have done is recant and clarify your mistake, but he wished to pursue in that. <laughs> and this is the actual audio you can see. So he says, 99 of Daesh, of ISIS, they are believers, Muslimun, truthful, sincere. They came to remove the oppression. Look at this. These are words of uh, praise for the Daesh. And he denied it. As well, he has some other speech supporting Jabhat Nusr, Nusra and supporting them. So this is the man that Ali Halabi is sitting along and supporting the whole revolution of Syria. And we're going to see more of it, inshallah. <laughs> and here another audio I'm going to play just to show that through these timings, we could probably see that how Ali Halabi maybe got affected with some of his ideologies about certain extremists, maybe by accompanying Adnan Arur. Here Ali Halabi is asked about Osama bin Laden.
So here Ali Halabi, he, when he was asked about Osam bin Laden, he said he's a rajul of wealth, a man of wealth. وَعِنْدَهُ غَيْرَ دِينِيَ He has uh, jealousy for the deen. And he said he's not a student of knowledge. Uh, he said he found this person, Osam bin Laden, and in the media, to uh, the people to speak about him. And he says, within the likes of that. And then he goes on to say he became the f- number one t- uh, target for America. And he goes, وَبِتَّالِ يَفْعَلْ مَا هُوَ بِاسْتِطَاعِتِ أَنْ يَفْعَلَهُ and because of that, he does whatever he's capable of doing. And he says, in my opinion, أَنَّهُ مُخْلِسْ, inshallah. We see him to be sincere. وَلَا نُزَكِيهِ عَلَى اللَّهِ We don't praise him before Allah. He says, وَإِنْ كَانَتْ هَذِي الْأُمُورَةِ يَفْعَلُهَا أَوْ تُنْقُلْ عَنْهُ نَحْنُ لَا نُوَافِقْ عَلَيْهَا He says, even uh, like these matters that, is, that he does or has been ascribed to him, although we don't uh, uh, cooperate or aid him or support him in this, or happy with it, and he says, كَمَا هُوَ مَعْرُوفِ مَنْهَجِنَا وَمَنْهَجُ عُلَمَائِنَا As is known in our, our manhaj, and the manhaj of our scholars. And this is about يعني, Osama bin Laden, a man that the scholars, some of our scholars have referred to him as a shaitan, as an evildoer, as a man that we should not refer to these wordings of praise for him. And so some people, they got confused of what he, Ali Halabi intended by this, so on the website of Ali Halabi, Kulu Salafiyin, some of them said, we asked, is it true that you don't declare Osama bin Laden as an innovator? That wasn't really what the quote was, but they asked a different question. So he, they said he responded by saying, بَلْ أُبَدِّعُهُ وَقَدْ قَدَّمْتُ لِكِتَابِ كَشْفِ الْأَشْتَارِ أَمَّا فِي تَنْظِيمِ الْقَاعِدَ مِنْ الْأَخْتَارِ He said, rather, I declare him to be an innovator. And I gave a, a, pre- a preface to the book clarifying the harm of Al uh, Qaeda, of the harm that they have. This, firstly, is there's no yani, uh, actual reference back to Ali Halabi. Secondly, this is not the issue, it's the issue of mentioning these wordings about an individual that is known for so much evil as his affair is so light. Uh, this could cause the confusion. And also it requires further clarification about what you said. So this is something to pay attention to. As well, another fitna, you know, after the fitna of Adnan Arur, Ali Halabi plays a role in the fitna of Muhammad al-Maghrawi. So we're going to go back as well from how it started in the early 2000s. Sure. So, the very beginning, Ali Halabi acknowledges that he opposed the Manhaj of Salaf, Muhammad al Maghrawi. Muhammad al Maghrawi is a renowned takfiri. And he has well known statements of takfir. We're going to play some of that. Where he even, as Sheikh Ahmed Najmi mentioned, he even believed that having the law of having citizenship and rules of, this, of, of the roads, of the streets, the lights, that this is disbelief and inventing. And all of this, he even said that the Muslimun today, 100% of them, he has some quotes of saying they're munafiqun. And we have more words that you're going to see. So you're going to, we're going to play some of those audios. But this is Ali Halibi. He mentions that he acknowledges his mistakes. It's not like someone who doesn't know. He acknowledges that first. So we have to see what Ali Halibi says after all this. <laughs> So here Ali Halabi defends fervently, saying, by Allah, wallahi, wa billahi, wa tallahi, that Maghrawi is not a takfiri, and that he wages war against takfir, and that he debates with the takfiris. 
So we'll just give you some examples of Maghrawi, of his persistence in takfir. It's a methodology of the person. You can see some of the audios. You can hear parts. So here, Maghrawi, he says, if you were to obey your own wife in the disobedience of Allah, she becomes an idol to you. Pay attention to this. So he says, likewise, your brother, you know, any one of these people, a ruler, if they were to tell you to do something that is disobedience, and you listen right away, they become an idol, and you worship them, he says. You worship them. So, uh, with all this, Sheikh Ahmed Najmi, he mentions some speech regarding Ali Halabi and as well his companions at that time in regards to their, the, uh, some of their defense of saying that Maghrawi is not a takfiri. So Sheikh Ahmed Najmi, when he was asked about Halibi and his likes, he says that I, I cannot advise to take knowledge um, upon uh, the someone that has been reported to us that they have uh, they support Al Maghrawi and also Abu Hassan Al Ma'ribi. So he says this is a person there's observations regarding, and I cannot say that you can take knowledge from this person. So after a number of years, what does Halabi say regarding this? You can hear it for yourself, and this is a response to Sheikh Ahmed Najmi's audio. <laughs> So here he says, after all those years, and that the issue, the difference between me and the, and the other uh, mashayikh, is that I, we do not take Abu Hassan al Ma'ribi and Maghrawi out of the fold of Salafiyyah. And then not only that, uh, after and as well in 2010, they announce a lecture that's going to happen on the website of Ali Halabi, that she's a supervisor of, Kulu Salafiyin, Liqa Mubasha Bain al Shaykhin al Fadilain. As a direct meeting between the two noble Mashayikh, that's what's mentioned here, Ali Halabi and Muhammad al Maghrawi. And the title is called Ahamiyatu Da'wa ila Allah. The importance of giving Da'wa to Allah. It's almost two hours of them aiding each other and supporting one another in the audio. Uh, this is something to pay attention to. As well, the individual that was spoke about on here, Abu Hassan al-Ma'ribi, yani Ali Halabi says about some of the issues and the mistakes that Ali Halabi, Abu Hassan al-Ma'ribi fell into, it cannot take him out of the fold of Salafiyyah. Like Abu Hassan al-Ma'ribi is the one that called some of the Sahabas al wuthaiya scums. Yani to call some of the Sahabas wuthaiya. Yani, but Ali Halabi said that if it comes from a Sunni, it's not considered as an insult. So Sheikh Salih Fawzan was asked about this. He said, this is insulting the Sahabas. None of the Sahabas are scum. All of them are elites, and they're the best of this nation. 
Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'ribi is the same one as said about some of the Sahabas, that they have khalal, the tarbiyah. They have some deficiency in their upbringing or their cultivation. Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'ribi is the one that brings doubts regarding accepting the news of uh, one channel of a trustworthy in certain matters. Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'ribi is the one that came with so much fitna in Yemen. And he is the one we're going to hear for ourselves. Like he doesn't even, he deems the Khwan Muslimin from Ahl Sunnah. And he, uh, you'll see what he has to say. هذا بالنسبة لكلام عن السلفيين لكن خليني في حديثي عن الإخوان المسلمين وعن السلفيين وإن كنت أرى أن الجميع هم من أهل السنة والجماعة وأن الجميع بإذن الله سبحانه وتعالى يتفق على أصول أهل السنة والجماعة ولا حاجة لل... لل... يعني لتطوير الخلافات وتصعيدها إلى أمور لا تحمد من تبديع وتضليل إلى غير ذلك يعني هنا يقول أن الإخوان المسلمين السلفيين they're all yani, Ahlul Sunnah and there's no need for them to make these big issues amongst themselves and to call each other innovators. This is Ikhwan, he's defending Ikhwan al-Muslimin. As well, he has, he got involved and uh, became a member of two siyasi pa, pa, political uh, groups where he be, just became politics. And this, and he says as well, Abu Hassan al is the one who says in an interview press, that he was advising Sheikh Mubil about his refutation, about Qardawi. So all of all these issues, Abu al-Hasil al-Ma'ribi, when it's all presented to Halabi, he continues to defend and make excuses, and even wrote a book to the defend his stance. And we're going to see that. Ahsan Allahu ilaykum wa baraka feekum. Huna... يسأل السائل هل صحيح ما يشيعه البعض بأن الشيخ عبد المحسن وفقه الله ألف هذا الكتاب للدفاع عن أبي الحسن أبدا أب. So here's another issue where Ali Halabi and his many of his companions when the book رفقا أهل السنة بأهل السنة أهل السنة بجنت وأهل السنة came out for Sheikh Musa Abad they were using it as a refutation against those who critiqued them about Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'ribi. So this question was raised to Sheikh Salih Suhaimi, who's close to Sheikh al-Musan Abbad, and knows one of the reasons why he authored that book. And he says, no, when he was asked, was this for Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'ribi? He, he said, abad, and never. Abadan, abadan, abadan. Sheikh and Sheikh Abdul Mahsin, when he asked in the masjid, he said, this is what I wrote for my friends, the Ahlul Sunnah. السلفيين لا لغيرهم لا لا ما أقصد الإخوة كذا قال لا أقصد الإخوان ولا أقصد التبليغ ولا أقصد فلان ولا فلان إنما أقصد توجيه إخواني أهل السنة فرفقا أهل السنة بأهل السنة هذا كم so this is shows you that all these people from them the the heads of them Ali Halabi and them using that book as to defend as against those who uh, critique them for defending Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'ribi or not saying that he's an innovator or saying that this book was for him, this shows you that that claim was not true. And here's some beautiful words of our Sheikh Sheikh Yaha concerning Ali Halabi as well. Ali Halabi makat khallas min Abi al-Hasan. Khallas ul adam azal warak ma'am. Ma'azal ma'am. So here, Sheikh Yahya says, Ali Halabi, out of all this time, he hasn't yani, freed himself from Abu al-Hasan al-Ma'ribi, nor Adnan Arur, nor Maghrawi. Usama al he said, nor has he freed himself from Usam al-Qusi. Usam al-Qusi, even other fitna that Ali Halabi played a role in, where Usam al-Qusi was a man that came with so many matters of, of that deviated from the manhaj of the Salaf. He even said that the, the ruler of a Muslim country could be a Nasrani. And this found an audio for, for him. So there's no problem in that whatsoever. Yani, you can find a lot of deviation, and this man's condition has become worsened. And with all of that, excuses, if this person 
is someone that is Salafi or not. So then as well, he says he didn't free himself from Jami'at Ihya Turath. Out of all the clarifications that came, and he says that I do not hide from you all, that uh, I, from time to time I have goodwill with them, I visit them from time to time. This, so Sheikh says, Ali Halabi is a mumayya, someone that watered down the methodology of the Salaf. And we're going to see that clearly as we mentioned. He said his, his call is a da'wah of that is watered down. You're going to see that a lot of issues that should be taken with a stronghold and seriousness, he waters them down. And Ali Halabi long ago was advised by Sheikh Al-Allama Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab al-Banna rahimahullah concerning his stance Abu Abul Hassan al-Ma'ribi. And we're going to hear the audio. So Ali al uh, Halabi was advised by Al uh, Allama Sheikh Muhammad Abdul Wahab al Banna Rahimullah about Abu al Hassan al Marib. He said, I even called him over the phone and advised him, advising him regarding his mistakes. So it's not like Ali Halabi was someone that he doesn't know the issue or it wasn't clear to him. A number of scholars, they're telling them of even their personal encounters with Abu al Hassan al Marib and their experiences with him. And with all this, you find that persistence. And then with all this, Ali Halabi persists. He writes a book called Manhaj Salaf al-Salih, a book on methodology of the Salaf al-Salih. And the book is mainly laid down innovative principles to defend why he holds those stance about those individuals. And he wrote it in the year 2009. And this book is to defend his stance about many of those individuals that he was criticized for. And in the book, he was criticized for not only the innovative principles that he came with regarding jarh ta'deel and a lot of affairs. You can see what those what's been written and recorded in a lot of pages. is regarding him tampering and distorting words of the scholars. Like there's even yani, screenshots where you can see he bring a quote of Sheikh Abdurrahman Sa'di and then he'll join a sentence together and take out a main part of it that's crucial to understand. And this is something that's known before that he's not reliable with a lot of his quotes. And the year before that, in the year 2005, as an example, Ali Halabi, he wrote a book, or he brought out a book called As'ila al-Iraqiyya fi Masali al-Iman wa takfir al-Manhajiyya. Uh, questions of, from Iraq regarding Misal Iman and Takfir, and he described it to Sheikh Saleh Fawzan. So he described this book to Fawzan, and someone asked Fawzan, Is this your book? And it has your, uh, has your signature on it. Halibi is describing it back to you. So Sheikh Saleh Fawzan says, No, this is not my book. This is, and it, it doesn't even contain some of the stuff I believe. It has a, a posing. So instead of Halibi accepting what Sheikh Saleh Fawzan mentioned, <coughs> Halibi persists and writes an article on his website, Kulu Salafiyin, saying, uh, uh, clear, reminding Fozan that he forgot. And he, it's not him that Ali Halibi made the mistakes, but it's Fozan. And he starts to persist. And he starts to try to say that, yes, what's mentioned in here is what you believe. And f- like to bring him into that affair. All of this is persistence upon error. 
And as well, we see from time to time that this individual, Ali Halabi, he even has a couple of clips where he says, I've changed from a stage of being upon ghulu to being a moderation. And we know before he was upon with being Albani and being upon the Sunnah. So for him to come saying, I left the stage of being ghulu and extremism to being moderate, this is a scary thing. As well, he brought out a website through his supervision called Kulu Salafiyin, where he was the mushrif of it, the moderator. But you can see him post on it, thank the people. This website, he brought it out. Sheikh Salih Suhaimi said about it, it's the website Kulu al It's a website for all the innovators. Because they, they intended to bring out and unite Salafis from all over with different types of beliefs, supposedly people ascribe. And it became a, a, a website where actually attacks the Salafis, and you can hear what Sheikh Salih Suhaimi says about it. So here he gives some examples of the fitna of this website cause, and it's under the, the supervision of Ali Halabi. So this is something to pay attention to. Another thing is Ali Halabi in most of the lands, he played a role in a lot of fitnas. I'll give you an example in the Arab Spring in Egypt. With what happened with Muhammad Hassan, Muhammad Hassan, the one that encouraged the riots and the commotion that happened, and as well, we know Muhammad Hassan is someone that has a number of mistakes. He even says, criticizing why some people are yani having a whole lecture against grave worshipping. And yani he as if he has a problem about that affair. And yani they should just do it as a side issue, not as a whole lecture. And yani it shows you that this is someone that is not someone that has correct methodology to criticize people. That is, for very grave worshipping is prominent. It's something that is uh, it's widespread. It needs to a lecture to have that. So Ali Halabi, and during that time, people, he, he was asked, he was speaking about if the Khwanis that did all that commotion, if they are Khawarij. So here he says, unfortunately, it was sad that some people say that the Khwanis are the Khawarij of our modern day, as if it's a bad word, as if it's something wrong. And uh, he says, even if that was true, it's not from manhood and good morality to bring that out in this uh, day of this crisis that's happening in Egypt. I believe it's something that is needed. If people know that these Ikhwanis are actually Khawarij and they shouldn't be relied upon, they need to be told that. That's very crucial. So in, in times, he was asked after... A lot of commotion, a lot of uh, crisis, uh, damage has happened because of the fatwa and the verdict of Muhammad Hassan and Mushaq al Hawaini concerning Egypt and the Arab Spring. You can hear from Ali Halabi what he says about that. <laughs> So 
So here he starts off mentioning that yeah, because the people have different circumstances, you can't come and criticize. So after acknowledging the mistakes that Abu Ishaq al Hawaini and Muhammad Hassan did in the Arab Spring and the role they did of the damage, he says, I, I don't make this an issue of black and white and that we treat them like Ahl Bid'ah. So the the host of the broadcasting channel says that Muhammad Hassan called to democracy, called to the man-made laws of that was brought out. And Ali Halabi, after all these mistakes he mentioned, he just keeps saying it's lie Jews, it's not permissible, as if it's some minor error. So the host tells them that your wording, Laya Jews, is not really helping out here because he's saying this is a menhaj. This is a menhaj, the methodology of the people. So the person, Ali Halibi says to the person, the host, what should I say other than Laya Jews? And there's a lot to be said I mean, other than Laya Jews. There's, this is, people's lives were destroyed, people's houses, so much killing. Just to say Laya Jews out of all of that is a very light word. So he says, he affirms afterwards that this methodology that Muhammad Hassan have and Abu Shaq is a methodology of, the, uh, of innovation. So then he says, he affirms, and I'll say it a hundred times now, that it's a methodology that's innovated. So they, this is finally added to the clarification. And then he says, uh, for every place, there's certain words that you can say. So here he goes on to say that he wouldn't say this in a certain other gatherings, but maybe here because he knows who he's viewing. So this is one thing regarding the Arab Spring. As well, in recent times, in the year 2018, Ali Halabi went to Sudan, and on audio he was asked about the statement of Muhammad Mustafa without his name, that the Sahabas iqtatalu li sulta, that they fought with one another just to get rulership. So he, he went, uh, Ali Halabi, Halabi said that this is statement as foolish and wrong. Then later on he was told that this is the statement of Muhammad Mustafa, that uh, Da'i in Sudan. So he came back making a further clarification saying that his words shouldn't be held upon individuals. And he went to him, and then this Muhammad Mustafa came with an audio saying that Ali Halabi came to me, and I defended my stance and my words, and Ali Halabi was silent. So in all cases, that caused division 
whatever he did there, that wasn't uh, clear. As well, another thing that Ali Halabi brought uh, that caused commotion is the whole issue about the message of Amman. Yes, some people went to extremism concerning this era of Ali Halabi, and they said, accused him of things that he was, in, he was free from. But we'll see how he dealt with this whole issue of the message of Amman. So he starts, he's asked, he says, yeah, I praise the Risal of Amman. He says, uh, we're going to see what some, of, some of the things that this message and this letter contained. He says, I praise it, but does everything in it is, is falsehood? And I mean, because not everything in it is falsehood, he can get away with praising it. And he says, I praised it with I need like two lines and a specific scenario. And we know that whether you praise it with two lines or one word, it's still a praise. And this is it. So he mentions that this letter or this message was written by the Wali al-Amr, the king of Jordan. So here, he said, because it's the speech, he uses the fact, justifies that because of the speech of uh, the ruler, yeah, and we know from our principles that we're not allowed to criticize it publicly. But the issue wasn't about criticizing it publicly or not. It was the issue of him, the way he praised this uh, risala, despite it containing some errors. So here he says about this risala, this treatise, that it's yani, at the peak of explaining the moderation of Islam. He praises it so high with these words. And if you read some of the things of the points about the Amman message, it's, they say they specifically recognize the validity of all eight madhabs of legal schools, of Sunni, Shia, Ibadi, and Ibadi, even Ash'ariism, uh, Sufism. And all of this is a, to redeem as who's a Muslim. And as well, it goes on with certain wordings, uh, distorting the meanings of crucial issues about the matter of honor, who deserve honor. As well, it has issues regarding the matter of jihad, a lot of mistakes. With that, he said, is the book that's at the peak of explaining the moderation of Islam. And this is something to pay attention to. As well, in recent times, Ali Harabi on his Twitter, he continues to praise certain individuals who are known for errors, like he praised in recent times, and the September 6, 2019, on his Twitter, he goes, Tana, al Allamat al Yemen, al Sheikh al Imrani, and the praise of Allamat al Yemen, Sheikh al Imrani, Muhammad Ismail al Imrani, the one that Sheikh Mubal said, Allah Musta'an, Allah Musta'an, ya Ikhwan, Sheikh Muhammad Ismail al Imrani, Afsaduhu al Ikhwan al Muslimun. Yani, that the one, this person has been corrupted by the Ikhwan Muslimun. And we know the alamut of Yemen is Sheikh Mubbal. The great scholar of Yemen is Sheikh Mubbal. Yani I was in Yemen for t- 10 years. We knew, everyone knew that the real great scholar there wasn't this person. I've been to his masjid. You can see a number of the issues regarding issues in aqidah and methodology. 
So one thing to pay attention to Ali Halabi, because of his controversy and his words and his persistence, he has caused differing in a lot of lands and division. For, for this reason, yani Sheikh Saleh Suhaimi said, I've been yani, addressing his matter, advising him for 30 years, and we're going to see what his conclusion that we mentioned about him. So he mentions that I know that Ali Hassan reached a level of ibtida, innovation. And that he's going to clarify that he deems him to be a mubtadian. So as well from his speech, he says that I declare him to be an innovator. And he mentioned that some of the scholars may do not declare him to be an innovator. But he's saying that this is something that he deems, and he mentioned for 30 years he knows him. And one of the things that we've seen even in recent times when he came to Toronto, and Atoni al Masjid, the brothers are witness to this, he was asked about IRS conference. He said to go there, take the good, and leave the bad. IRS conference, and he in fact he said, I would go there myself. And IRS is a place, a conference of mus- music, dancing, drums. It became like a concert. Even they played the Burda, which contains words of shirk, Hamza Yusuf, great well-known Sufi, uh, Habib al-Jafri. Yani, all of these people that are known for issues in their aqidah, you're going to tell the people, the general 9 to 5, to go take the good and leave the bad? This is the, the deception. As well, in recent times, when he went to UK for this summer uh, conference, they, they put out that the allegations of Ali Halabi were unfounded. Out of all these mistakes, he goes on to defend himself. And even when I asked uh, one of the leaders of QSS, I asked him, did Ali Halabi recant it from some of these, uh, any, any of these mistakes or the, a lot of them? He couldn't uh, answer me. And out of all these mistakes, we do not know that Yani, Ali Halabi recanted from a lot of them, or even some of them. We've, we're still in a sh- state of asking to, these people to clarify. And also some of Sheikh Salim Hilali, who knew Ali Halabi for so long, clarifies his affair as well. So uh, Sheikh Salim mentions about Halabi and as well others that they continue yani, to work because they say that under the claim that they see that Abu Hassan al Maribi to work with Abu Hassan al Maribi because they claim that he is possible to rectify him. And we all know by the passing of the years of Hassan al Maribi is just getting worse. The people can see this and all of this, and with this there's still no clarification. So something to pay attention is with all this, even in recent, uh, there was recent uh, elections of, in, uh, in Morocco. Maghrawi played a big role in some of his wordings. He said if whoever doesn't v- uh, vote against this type of candidate, then he is disloyal to us and also to the Qur'an. And it be- words that even could lead to kufr again. And this is recent times, and there's no clarification from Ali Halabi concerning this. As well, we know that one of the greatest fitness of, of this asr is tamir, that Ali Halabi played a big role in, watered down. So this is something to pay attention to. And when he's asked about certain individuals who have issues and aqidah mistakes, he really waters down the answers. You can see in some of his answers regarding yani, uh, Abdel Fattah, Abu Ghudda, it's available on audio. There's a number of issues. These are just an eye-opener that we should wake up and realize that when we know the root cause of these division and separation, 
إذا عرف السبب بطل العجب when it's known it becomes so clear to understand what we see today or some of these uh, people that have come back from the uh, Muslim lands and took upon themselves to fervently defend Ali Halabi and cause division all in the name of Salafiyyah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أن يوفق الجميع لما يحبه ويرضى We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify us all and to guide us to that which is correct and to allow us to see the truth as truth and falsehood as falsehood وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين